What is up guys, it's Khaled, in this video we're going to be talking about the Strathol and Pet Battle Dungeon. We're not just talking about it, but we're going to go through it step by step and completing it on a hard mode. Hard mode is the difficulty of Pet Battle Dungeon where you can't heal your pets through it at all. Although I think you can log over to an alt and uh, heal them that way, but that's besides the point. So with that being said, you need a good amount of level 25 pets to get through this. So there's a total of 11 fights, but then there's one extra very difficult fight that's optional and also has a chance to be there, so it isn't always present. A lot of these fights also can be done with two pets, and some even with one pet, so I try to get the easiest strategies that allowed some leeway in that manner. I'm gonna go ahead and list off all the pets I use so you can possibly jot them down as a grocery list of pets to get. So this is in no particular order. Well, actually, it's basically the order I use them in. Anyways, I used Blight Breath, a combination of uh, two rabbits or hares. I used the Grasslands Cottontail and Tolai Hare, I believe, but it can be really be any rabbit or hare. Uh, Ghastly Kid, Zoom, Tinytron, Mechanical Pandaren Dragonling, Zandalari Ankle Render, Zandalari Knee Biter, Left Shark, two more rabbits or hares, but these have to have a higher speed than 297. So that's important. And they have to be different than the previous two rabbits you used. Elusive Skimmer, Effervescent Glowfly, another rabbit or hare with a speed of above 260, and Dire Beak Hatchling. Now those are for all the required fights to complete this pet battle dungeon. But for the very difficult optional fights that has a chance of being there, I use the Unborn Valkyrie, Macabre Marionette, and Coastal Scuttler. And I'll of course be going over that fight once we get there. So anyways, let's get started with the strategies. So first fight is against Belchling. I use my Blight Breath with Dreadful Breath in slot 1. The second ability doesn't matter since you won't be using it. Then I used Acid Rain in slot 3. This pet almost soloed the team, so you can put any pet really in slot 2 and 3. I just used my Twilight Clutch Sister with Twilight Meteorite in the third ability slot since it does good AoE damage. But like I say, you can pretty much use anything. So starting off the fight, use Acid Rain which will buff your damage of Dreadful Breath. Then you want to use Dreadful Breath. Now this ability will continue, and you just want to keep using it until your Blight Breath dies. The back pets may have a sliver of health left, so bring in your other pet to finish it off. I use my Twilight Clutch Sister, Twilight Meteorite, to kill the whole team. Fight number two against your first boss pet. This is where you want to use your two rabbits or hares. Both rabbits need to have Flurry, Dodge, and Stampede. Now for your third pet, it's very important that it has more health than 1546. I never had to use my third pet, but it just needs to have more health than your rabbits. So starting off the fights, you want to use Dodge. He'll try to grab another one of your pets and bring it into the field but you dodge it. Then follow that with a stampede which will continue and after that continues he will then grab your other rabbit and pull it into the fight. Use flurry since he has shatter defense debuff, use flurry again since he still has shatter defense debuff and now since he's low I decided to just finish him off with flurry and then on his undead round I just dodged because why not? And that's Sludge Belcher. So for your third fight, this is against the Wandering Phantasm with two random back pets. You'll want to use Ghastly Kid with Hoof, Consume Magic, and Haunt. Then have Zoom as your second pet with Charge, Shell Shield, and Slow and Steady. Then you can use just about anything for your third pet. I didn't even use it. I used my Anixian Whelpling since I knew it would be good against the back pets that could appear, but I didn't even realize that it was poor quality. Anyways, starting off with the fight, you'll want to use Hoof, and then follow that with a Consume Magic to get rid of his Curse of Doom and Haunt's debuff. Then finally, just spam Hoof until Wandering Phantasm dies and the second pet comes in. Starting off with Haunt on that second pet, and then bring in your Zoom. With Zoom, you'll want to start with Shell Shield, and it's very important to keep this up. Follow that with Slow and Steady, and then use Charge. Now you'll want to keep using Charge as a filler, and use Shell Shield when there's one round left on the buff. Then use Slow and Steady on cooldown, and you'll finish the fight. Next fight is against the Crypt Fiend. So I use Tinytron with Arcane Blast, Lightning Shield, and Fire Shield, then Mechanical Panda and Dragonling with Breath, Thunderbolt, and Decoy. Then pick something good for your third pet, probably something that's not mechanical. I did end up using it, but since it was mechanical, it took some more damage. So starting off with the fight with Tinytron, I use my Lightning Shield, then I follow that with Fire Shield, and then I'm going to use Arcane Blast as a filler. So just keep using Arcane Blast until you take the Crypt Fiend into their Undead Round. Now even though I didn't have Lightning Shield, shield on me anymore. I just passed on the undead round since I want to use lightning shield against something who can actually take damage. Now when the first backpack comes out, just
just rinse and repeat. Use Lightning Shield, then use Fire Shield, and then just spam Arcane Blast. Now I was able to take out the second pet with Tinytron, but my Tinytron also died. So I swapped to Mechanical Banter and Dragonling. Now I kind of had some bad RNG facing a pet previously that left dots on me, so when I started off with Decoy, it was pretty much obsolete. But anyways, after Decoy, I used Thunderbolt, then I just spammed Breath, even though it didn't do much damage, and uh, then my Mechanical Panda and Dragonling was taken out, and Zaz, or however you say that, only had a sliver of health left, so I just took it out with my third pet. Now for the next boss pet. Liz the Tormentor. So I use my Zandalari Ankle Render with Hunting Party, Leap, and Black Claw, and my Zandalari Knee Biter with Hunting Party, Black Claw, and Leap. I'd highly suggest getting these pets for the future, at least since they're very good with taking out any boss pets. Anyways, you can pick anything for your third pets. I did actually use it, but I didn't really have to. You'll see what I mean. So always with this team, start off with Black Claw. This greatly buffs the damage of Hunting Party. So follow that up with Hunting Party, it will continue, and then use Leap. This will increase your speed so you can go first. Use Leap again, and your Ankle Render will die. Now if she had a very small sliver of health left, you can really pick either pet to take her out. I just decided to pick my third pet. I don't know why, it doesn't matter, because she died. Now for the next fight. The Horde of Critters you have to face. So there's a cheese strat that you can do with this. As long as you have any pets that can repeatedly do AoE damage, then you'll be good. So I used Left Shark. With Left Shark, I picked Water Jet in slot 1, Tidal Wave in slot 2, and Rain Dance in slot 3. So starting off the fights here, you see you're facing 3 poor quality pets. Well, you'll want to use Tidal Wave then another Tidal Wave, and then use Rain Dance to heal up and increase your crit. Then just keep spamming Tidal Wave and use Rain Dance on cooldown. Now the thing about this fight is you want to make sure you defeat the back pets before you defeat this front pet, which with this strategy, you will. I'm just saying that in case you decide to use another pet with a lot of repeated AoE abilities. That's because when the back pets die, they stay dead. If you keep defeating the front pets over and over again, then the back pets keep coming back. Not forever though. If you do decide to do that single target strategy, then you'll face a total of 8 pets instead of 3. So anyways, once the back pets die, if you're able to, use Water Jet to take out the front pet. Otherwise, just bring in your second pet to take it out. So now we're at stage 7 with the Risen Guard. This is when you want to pick 2 rabbits or hares with a speed of at least 297. I personally use Arctic Hare and Elfin Rabbit, both with Flurry, Dodge, and Stampede. Third bet can be anything. I never used mine. We're going to start off with Flurry this time, then follow that with a Dodge, and then use Stampede. Stampede will continue, and it will kill the Risen Guard. Just pass on the Undead Round for the second bet, start off with Dodge, then into Stampede. Stampede of course continues, then Flurry because of Shattered Defense. Now that should knock Gargi into their Undead Round. I used Flurry here, I didn't use Dodge because he was already in the middle of this weird thing that was healing him and had no use really against the third pet. Use Dodge, then follow that with Stampede. This will most likely lead to your rabbit's death. So bring in the other one and Flurry, the son of a gun, to death. So there's that fight. Now here we are at the hardest fight in here. Frazia Bee, which is named after Alex Afrazia Bee. So, some things about this before we get started. This fight not only is optional, but it has a chance of being here, so it may not always be here. If it isn't there for you, you can go ahead and just continue, but if you do want to experience it, then you can always leave the pet battle dungeon, heal your pets up, and redo the dungeon until stage 7 to see if Frazia Bee is here. I actually did that, and he appeared here after my third time. Now, beating him will actually give you an extra piece of currency that you can already get at the end, which is used for buying the Stratholm battle pets. So it may not be a bad idea just to keep restarting until he appears. Anyways, onto the fight and the pets I used. So I used the Unborn Valkyr with Shadow Shock, Curse of Doom, and Haunt, then Macabre Marionette with Macabre Maraca, Death and Decay, and Dead Man's Party. Then my third pet is the Coastal Scuttler with Frostbit, Stampede, and Bubble. So there's two methods of doing this fight and it depends on whether your Unborn Valkyrie is HH breed or BB breed. HH breed, it will have 1806 health. BB breed, it will have 1562 health. Mine was HH, but I'll save the move set for both breeds. So first off, this is what you do if your Valkyrie is HH breed. That is if its health is 1806. Start off with a Shadow Shock, then Curse of Doom, then do Shadow Shock again, and finish that with Haunt. Smokey still has a good amount of health, that's fine, just bring in your Macabre Marionette. Start off with Dead Man's Party, 
This will help increase the damage he takes from Curse of Doom. Dead Man's Party continues, Curse of Doom hits, and Smokey dies. Pyro comes in. Dead Man's Party continues again, then use Macabre and Maraca. Use Macabre and Maraca again until Pyro dies. Now luckily, his big burst dot thing that stuns me hit my marionette when it had a sliver of health, so you'll be stunned on your undead round. So just pass. Against Infectus, bring your Valkyrie back out, and use Curse of Doom. Then use Shadow Shock on your undead round. Haunt won't do anything since Haunt doesn't work on your undead round. Now it's 1v1. Your Coastal Scuttler against his Infectus. Start off with Stampede. Stampede will continue. It will then continue again and Curse of Doom will get him low. Then use Bubble, then Frostbit. And just Frostbit again to knock him into his undead round if he isn't already. And you should be good. Infectus is dead, Frozzy B is defeated, and you got a Cleanse Remains currency. Now for the BB breed of Unborn Valkyr. For the most part, it's the same, but what you want to do is start off with the Curse of Doom. Then do Shadow Shock. Then do Haunt with your Valkyr. Bring out your Macabre Marionette and start off with Death and Decay this time. Then Dead Man's Party, which will defeat his first pet. Pyro comes in, Dead Man's Party should finish, and then use Macabre Marionette until your pet dies. Now if your Macabre Marionette dies before Pyro, then bring out your Valkyr and finish off with Shadow Shock. Then when Infectus comes out, start off with a Curse of Doom from your Valkyr, then use Shadow Shock afterwards if you can. Bring out your Coastal Scuttler, once your Valkyr is dead of course, and do the same thing as before. Stampede. Once that finishes, use Bubble and Frostbit until Infectus dies. And there you go, Frozzy B with a BB breed of Unborn Valkyr. Now back to easy stuff, Nefarious Terry. I used an elusive skimmer with Scratch, Stampede, and Whirlpool. Then you can pick anything for your two back pets. I didn't really use them. So you want to start off with Whirlpool, then you Stampede so you can get Shattered Defense. Whirlpool should also land during this time. Once Stampede is over, just keep using Scratch and it will eventually take him out. Next up for Sage 9, you get to play a little minigame. You take control of this abomination and kill a bunch of these undead things. Just use your Grapple 3 ability on the Flying Gargoyles uh, and run around spamming 1 and 2. It's pretty simple. Then you venture into this uh, ziggurat, or whatever these structures are called, for your final fights. Against Tommy the Cruel, I was able to soul him with an Evervescent Glowfly. You can put whatever for your second and third pet. I use Scratch, Confusing Sting, and Swarm. So you want to start off with Swarm. It will continue for a few rounds. Then you Scratch, and then you Scratch again. And it's, it's that simple. Against Huncher, I used another rabbit. This one having a speed of at least 260. And then I didn't even use either of my back pets. But try to put a level 25 critter as one of them just in case you do have to resort to them. You don't want to fail after you've made it this far. So same strategy with this bunny, which I used a dust bunny by the way. Start off with dodge, then you stampede, which will continue for some rounds. Use flurry, then dodge. Or you can flurry, I don't know, I just use dodge. Then flurry, then flurry again and he's dead. Now after you defeat him, you'll get incapacitated by two shadowy figures. This happens at the end of every pet battle dungeon. Some RP will happen. I assume there's going to be some nasty pet battle raid at the end of the expansion. I don't know, but these shadowy figures need to have some purpose. Anyways, once they're done talking to you, you get to face the final boss, Blackmane, who is pretty easy. Possibly the easiest end boss to any of these pet battle dungeons, but nevertheless, I used a Dire Beak Hatchling with Fox for Swarm, Iron Skin, and Predatory Strike. Then for your second pets, you can use pretty much anything, but try to pick a pet with a hard hitting ability. I use a Sharp Talon Hatchling with Predatory Strike. Then your third pet can be whatever. I never used it. So starting here, you want to use Iron Skin then Falcus or Swarm, which will continue, then use Predatory Strike. Now you're actually going to pass here. That's because we want to use Iron Skin on the next round since if you use Falcus or Swarm, it continues for too long. So after Iron Skin, pick Falcus or Swarm. He dodges the first one, but gets hit when it continues. Use Falcus or Swarm again, and Black Man is dead. Well, not quite. He then revives to full health with empowered abilities. So start off with Iron Skin, then Predatory Strike, then Falcus or Swarm, and continues and use again when you can. Now he'll take out your Darby Catchling, so swap to your second pet and use its hard hitting ability. Then you may need to hit it again with something small, so do that and you'll defeat Black Bane. And there you go. That's the Stratholm Pet Battle Dungeon. Sean Wilkers will spawn and you're good to right click on that little eye thing on your minimap and teleport out of the dungeon. Complete the quest to get the cleanse remains, so you may have two of those now if you defeated Frazia B. And with those you can purchase a plethora of battle pets. A Ziggy battle pet, a Crypt Fiend, a Contained Banshee, and Smelly Reaver for different amounts of cleanse remains. Then the unopened Stratholm supply crates for one can have like pet bandages in it and leveling stones and whatnot. So 
there you have it, the Strathall Pet Battle Dungeon. There's obviously other pets that you can use, so if you found a better team, then you can feel free to leave it in the comments below. But if you guys enjoyed this video, then feel free to leave a like on it, sub to the channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.